Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle News update. Sounds kind of weird me saying that because it's kind of an update on myself. I uh, headed over to the doctor today, the thyroid cancer surgeon. My friend, uh, Dr. Lenny Thaler, got me in in one day, a one day appointment. I mean, this guy has a three and a half, I think, month wait list to go see him. Uh, they called me and they said, uh, you must have a really good friend because we got you in on one day's notice on an appointment. So I had to drive over to Hollywood, Florida, which is kind of a nice drive, better than you know Miami. And I met with the, the doctor and he allowed me to film, which was good because I, I, I can't remember anything. When I go to doctors, I hear it, but then I don't really remember everything. So I said, you know what, can I film? Plus I wanted to do a little video and he was really cool about it. He had actually watched my videos and uh, seen the YouTube channel and seen uh, Instagram and Facebook stuff I put on there. So he kind of was familiar with me. Plus Lenny and him are really good friends. And so I, it was kind of like going into an atmosphere where you know, like you kind of know the guy already, which is good because you know, there's nothing wrong sometimes with having a little VIP treatment, especially when you're in a, in a situation where you're really nervous. And you know, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it, would, it put me a lot at ease which is something you really want when you get a diagnosis of cancer, obviously. Now, everyone has really you know, reached out to me and shown a lot of support, prayers, you know, suggestions on doctors, suggestions on you know, healing modalities, and, and that really meant a lot to me. Um, so let's, uh, let's cut to the chase, and we're gonna, I'm going to show Dr. Bermson talking to me about what my situation is, showing me my uh, ultrasound that he did in the office of my uh, thyroid and my lymph nodes, and telling me the, the, the situation and laying out for me all the different options I have and you know what ultimately uh, will be the decision. Let's take a look. So I know you just saw this. Yeah, I just showed it. So I mean- Explain what you think. So, I mean, there's, there's three ways of, um, treating thyroid malignancy, basically. Uh, it's really two, and then one is an A and B. So uh, A, which is kind of the, the newest concept in, in thyroid malignancy, is observation. They're not operating on people. Mm -hmm. Japanese have been doing it for a whole bunch of years. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of data out of Japan that there are certain individuals that uh, can just be observed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's generally for thyroid malignancies that are less than 1.2 centimeters in size, and it's generally for thyroid malignancies that are located in the thyroid tissue itself. Which is so minus? Kind of, at, well, this is the area that we would have to talk about if that was something you were even considering. I mean, we don't, as a practice, we generally don't observe people because right. in the United States, uh, it is still, even though they're doing it in Japan, mm -hmm. in the United States, it's still sort of, uh, at, observation is like a, an academic institution type of thing where they have a trial gotcha. and they follow people and they collect right. all the data. Right. We have definitely had people here, we just spoke to a lady yeah. the other day who really, really, really did not want to have her thyroid cancer operate on and it mm -hmm. was small. So I said, she go to Sloan, Sloan Kettering, Kettering and I sent her up to the guy up there who runs like the big trial on it. Mm -hmm. And then she she's part of that trial and um, mm -hmm. I, we just spoke to her the other day because now she's thinking about having it out. That's kind of the... One of the things I'm learning about this trial over time yeah. is that a lot of people think it's a good idea up front. Yeah. But as time goes on and yeah. they have to keep going and following it right. and they keep telling them, ooh, we got to, you know, if you have this or you have that, right. you got to get it. Then everyone starts thinking, I don't know if I want to do yeah. But that aside. I always ask the experts, if it was you, what would you do? Well, this is not what I would do for, for yours, yeah. for myself, mm -hmm. because uh, yours sits sort of right on the tracheal, right near the tracheal margin here. So. Okay. This is the trachea run, running here, and it's okay. the, uh, excuse me, sorry. So, if we're looking at, if we're looking at like this, and this would be the trachea, mm -hmm. which would be this. Right. This would be sort of the cartilage margin of the gotcha. trachea. And this, and really what we're talking about is sort of inside of here. So there's the cartilage, mm -hmm. and the, your tumor is sitting it's like like right in here. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to like involved. almost up against it, right there. Mm -hmm. So the Japanese are, uh, are hesitant to watch malignancies that are up against structures that, if it was to advance, could cause a problem. Like if they think it's gotcha. up against a nerve, if they think that makes the vocal cords work, if they think it's up right. against 
the trachea. I got a big um, mouth. I, my voice is going to work. <laughs> well, I got gotcha. you. And I, I, so I don't think, I think that, that even in Japan, mm -hmm. they would probably look Operate. at this and decide not to go with a, a mm -hmm. observational approach. Okay. So the second part, choice one is operate, choice two is, uh, I mean, choice one is observe, choice two is operate. So operate comes in an A or an, and a B. Mm -hmm. A is operate on half of the thyroid gland, B is operate and take out the entire thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the next decision point that we right. have to go through. So once we decide that we're gonna to go to the OR, mm -hmm. then we say, okay, what things require that we take out the entire thyroid gland and, and what aspects of this would allow us to avoid taking out the entire thyroid sure. gland. And generally a lot of it has to do with uh, one, how's your thyroid working? So if I have a patient who comes in here and they're on thyroid hormone, it doesn't make sense to me to try to preserve their other lobes so they don't have to be on thyroid hormone because they're already on thyroid hormone. Gotcha, so I, I just say get it out because all you're doing is putting yourself at risk for a second operation. Right. Um, then the real, real reason that you need to have your entire thyroid gland out is radioactive iodine. So patients who are gonna get additional treatment mm -hmm. after thyroidectomy, the additional treatment in well-differentiated thyroid cancer, which is what this is, mm -hmm. is radioactive iodine. There is no real chemotherapy for it. We generally right. don't use external beam radiation like someone who, you know, had like prostate cancer or breast sure. cancer. They, it is what it sounds like. It is a pill with mm -hmm. radioactive iodine in it, and it's used to treat any residual cells or potential residual So it malignancy. destroys any kind of cancer cells? Well, it destroys any cells that take up iodine. So, would be so any that thyroid would be thyroid, thyroid, thyroid tissue or well-differentiated thyroid malignancies. So you, you wouldn't do that on a partial, obviously. So on right? a partial, you wouldn't do it because all your radioactive iodine would be taken up by right. tissue left right. behind. Right. So if I know a patient's going to get radioactive iodine or my, my gut thing. feeling is I, I take out the whole thing because, I mean, Ivan and I have, a, have an unfortunate history of do, I doing a lot of people's other surgeons' hemithyroidectomies. They fixing. do one and then yeah, maybe not fixing, but... They didn't think about whether the person was getting radioactive iodine. They went to their endocrinologist, mm -hmm. and then they were like, "Okay, now we're going to do radioactive iodine," and realized they did half. And they were right. like, "You got to get your other half out. Right. You got to go back and have a second so, operation." And they get annoyed. Uh, so we see those people because uh, they because most endocrinologists won't give radioactive iodine to someone who's only had half out. Right? Do I? You think I need radioactive iodine? I well, we do, number one. I don't, we didn't see any lymph nodes. That was just before I popped in here. I okay. went over and Dr. Golding and I went through the ultrasound together. Right. He did not see any lymph mm -hmm. nodes that he's concerned about. It. That is one of the reasons people will, will get radioactive iodine is that if they have a number of lymph nodes mm -hmm. involved. Right. Um, and although when you read on the internet, it, the, the, the number five comes up a lot is five lymph nodes being important. Not every endocrinologist buys into that concept. Okay. For some, just having a few, lymph, you know, two lymph nodes will push them to do radioactive iodine. Right. So if I have lymph node positivity, I do usually it. Do take it. out the entire thyroid gland gotcha. so the patients aren't doing multiple operations because mm -hmm. no one really wants to do that. Right, what's the odds of something coming back if you do it, you know, like like in my case, like let's say you take out half my gland, is it, is it am I susceptible to producing thyroid tumors? Is that, is... Well, well, let me finish with one oh, more okay. point and then I'm gonna get to that. My, okay. my other point, because you had said, why do we give people radioactive iodine, okay. is margin issues. Because radioactive iodine really works much better um, on areas where you have structural disease that recurs. Mm -hmm. So if someone has tumor that, that comes back like on the trachea in a little area, mm -hmm. those areas take up radioactive iodine pretty well, mm -hmm. whereas deep in lymph nodes, maybe not so much. Well, it's just why we take out all those lymph nodes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So, you know, if we're in there and we think that this margin is close, yeah. then generally I tell people, get the whole thing out. So just, because you'll, you'll make the decision when you're in If in the this, final right. pathology, because remember, I take out this specimen like this, mm -hmm. and I give this to the pathologist, right. and then they take it and they cover the entire thing with ink. Mm -hmm. And then they bread loaf it like a rye bread, and they look at all the different slices. See where so come. if they see tumor on ink, even if the tumor really isn't going beyond it, they don't know that. All they see is ink tumor. Mm -hmm. and they go positive margin. Right, right, right. Uh, it may not even be on the trach. I mean, it just may have just come up to it, but there's really no way to determine that. Mm -hmm. All they know is it hit the ink. Mm -hmm. So once it hits ink, they go positive margin, and once. A lot of our uh, many endocrinologists see positive margin in a pathology report. Yeah. They're giving radioactive iodine. Right. So if I do less than a whole and they see positive margin, 
you know, you can't do that. Then they're going to be sending, uh, you know, the patient back to me and saying, you need to take the rest consider out. doing the other half because we're going to get very like about it. Will you know when you go in there if it's on, if it's we too have close a, or not too close? We have a pretty good idea. It's not a perfect science. Okay. I mean, it's not like I can tell you, you know, on this, because we're talking like individual no, cell, cell layers. Right. So generally what I do is if someone's really interested in preserving their thyroid function, mm -hmm. I will uh, do half and when I'm taking the thought with the specimen off, I will look really closely at that. If I need to, I can even have the pathologist take a look. But if if there's a lot of hemming and hawing about, you know, is it or isn't it? Take, yeah, then it. I'm just thinking this isn't going to work out well. Right, right. Um, so that will sometimes at that point just tell me to do the whole thing. Right, right, right. right. Um, so those are the reasons that we would do uh, the the entire th you know the total thyroidectomy mm -hmm. really for for the radioactive iodine and if people are on um, uh, thyroid hormone already. So back to your question, does this mean that you're gonna produce more, more thyroid malignancy? So that is actually an excellent question because well-differentiated thyroid carcinoma, specifically papillary thyroid carcinoma, is a multifocal process, meaning if we see one, there may be other ones. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of data for doing hemithyroidectomies. And if, it, if multifocality meant everyone recurred on the other side, mm -hmm that wouldn't even exist as a choice. I mean, a long time right. ago, it would have been proven in the literature, bad, right. bad choice. So uh, clearly when we do hemithyroidectomies in the right people, you know, five, 10% max of people, of patients will recur on the other side and have to go back right. in the future. Okay. Uh, it does mean that one, if, you, if one decides to do the hemi, you take the scans. hemi, they have to accept the risk that the other side needs to be followed mm -hmm. and that if disease pops up on the other side, yeah. and, and, and disease could either be disease that spread from one side to the other through the mm -hmm. lymphatics, yeah. or de novo disease, meaning that yeah. you just have yeah. something about your thyroid that makes thyroid malignant. Do these papillary uh, tumors respond to TSH? Is they, is that, is... they do, um, and depending upon final pathology, some patients are suppressed, meaning that if um, we do a hemithyroidectomy, mm. And everything goes great. Mm -hmm. Margins are negative, um, but it's big enough that makes the endocrinologist uncomfortable. Or if there's a question of maybe a lymph node that that was stuck on the thyroid that mm -hmm. we find in the end that turned out to be positive, and they want to make sure that any tumor that's left around, and, and that's not a, that could either be structural disease or a lymph node that doesn't grow. They will sometimes put people on thyroid hormone anyway, just to keep their TSH level really low. Because low. Yeah. TSH drives these well differentiated That's thyroid right. malignancy. Yeah. So the lower your TSH level, um, the less chance you're going to activate these cells to grow. But mm. we, we have to be careful about that because for years everyone was suppressed. I mean that was like a thing. Right. That endocrinologists were suppressing everyone. And it turned mm. out that they it was were being overly aggressive. It was like the days when everyone got radioactive iodine. Gotcha. Um, you know, in the Late 80s and 90s when I was in medical school, mm -hmm. I mean, you got a thyroid, well different thyroid malignancy, you were pretty much a regular yeah. active iodine. Is this genetic, do you think? Uh, I, as far as I know, you don't have anyone on your phone. What Len told me. You My mother. Have, did, she, did she have papillary? I don't, you, I don't know what she had because it was so long ago. She died with pancreatic cancer years later, but I, I, I think she had something wrong with the thyroid. I don't know if she just got radioactive thyroid because she had an enlarged thyroid or she something. May, she may have. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, Familial papillary malignancies mm -hmm. of the thyroid generally mm -hmm. need three family members that are indirectly. Oh, really? um, My sister has Hashimoto's. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna say, but she may have had autoimmune thyroid disease. Which, yeah, that's what I, that's what I think it is. She just recently has been put on thyroid. Because that is that is one of the things I guess we need to think about in mm -hmm. terms of what your final decision is going to mm -hmm. be. Uh, knowing about your sister and your mom is, mm -hmm. do you have autoimmune thyroid disease? Because that might yeah. affect your decision right. too. I mean, if you have nor and we should, we should. I never had ANA antibodies. I never had uh, any TSH or a T3, we should just T4. get. We should yeah. just oh, update. Yeah, we should get a new set of, of thyroid function, and we okay. should definitely check your thyroid peroxidase antibody levels. Okay, which go along with Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. and also your um, thyroid globulin antibodies, which are another check everything. I'm, I'm, yeah, because you know when when patients have a, a really high thyroid peroxidase antibody level or thyroid globulin antibody mm -hmm. level. Uh, I think that pretty much portends that the amount of time that they're 
contralateral, the opposite lobe is going to really function for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe limited or it right. may not function at all. And in that right. case, I've, I've definitely had that push some patients to do total. Right, right. I mean, I, like I said, I've always had a really fast metabolism. I mean, I don't know if that's thyroid related or just muscle mass related or whatever the case may be, but I've never seen a, an off thyroid function test on myself. It sounds yeah. like from your, from what I listened to yeah. yours, yes, your your uh, YouTube video yeah. that you always had it because it said you had trouble putting on muscle compared yeah, to I some always, of these yeah. other guys. Yeah. That because uh, you had a faster metabolism. But I also, you know, I was a runner in college, ten miles a day. You know, I was, you know, I went the opposite direction after college. I went into bodybuilding, but you know, so I, I don't know who knows if I, I think I permanently altered my metabolic enzymes. <laughs> well, that's possible too. I mean, from from the running, you know, it. make it yeah. more efficient. But I don't know. It, it, so it's getting back to the original question. If you were me, what would you, what would you do? Just see what the blood work shows first. I would start off with that. I mean, okay. I think that. Sorry, I just want to make sure they're not texting me from the OR. My last patient. No. Um, <laughs> I think that observation doesn't make sense for you, so yeah. I would definitely take that one Absolutely. off the table. Uh, I think that you still have uh, hemi versus total as possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that this margin here may be pushing us towards the total. Mm -hmm. um, in the operating room, we do figure some of this stuff out because right. you know we get to we get a closer look at that margin, mm -hmm. and we get to look at lymph nodes too. Because I know that Dr. Golding just did a very nice ultrasound where he looked right. at your lymph nodes, but. In the operating room, I get another shot at it. So you, you, you actually can see those lymph nodes? Yeah, we, we see them, and sometimes we'll, if we have any question, we will sometimes take a lymph node out okay. and send it off to pathology. Right, right. Um, I mean, how far off can you really go on the, when you're doing surgery with the lymph nodes? It, what do you mean, how far off? I mean, how far can you see? Because I mean, you're, you're only oh, an incision low, you, right? Right, and well, I, only need, I only need lymph to know right about around. the ones oh. right around. Oh, okay, so, okay. So the, the, we have a bunch of lymph node... Uh, packets around the thyroid. We have mm -hmm. one packet here. We have a packet on the anterior part of the trachea. Mm -hmm. Below each one of the um, thyroid lobes, we have more lymph nodes. So in the operating room, when we take out the thyroid gland, we actually get to look at all of that. Okay. Uh, the lymph node that sits right above the thyroid is something that's called the Delphian lymph node, and we will often take that one out and send it for pathology. No right. matter what, it's kind of right. a freebie lymph node in that it's not near any structures that you can injure, so there's mm -hmm. really no reason not to take it out and send gotcha. it to pathology because it somewhat portends the risk of having other lymph nodes uh, positive gotcha. in the what we call the central compartment, which is where mm -hmm. the thyroid is. Right. The lateral compartments, which are uh, under the sternocleidomastoid muscles, mm -hmm. the jugular chain of nodes, those lymph nodes we see really well okay. on ultrasound. Gotcha. Unlike the lymph nodes that are in the paratracheal spaces here, mm -hmm. which Dr. Golding would have had to look, you know, through thyroid right. to see, mm -hmm. he does not get nearly as good a look at the lymph nodes in the central compartment as he does the lateral right. lymph nodes. So mm -hmm. he basically tells me uh, what the lateral lymph nodes are going to look, you know, going to be right. like. And if he tells me that the lateral nodes are clean, which is what he told me, You're good with that. that's off the table once again. So I don't need to even be concerned about that in the operating room. What about parathyroid? Uh, my job is to keep your nerves that make your vocal cords work, your recurrent laryngeal nerves, your superior laryngeal nerves that mm -hmm. affect pitch and projection of the voice, Please, and to yeah. keep your parathyroid glands happy. Good, that yeah, is my yeah, job. Yeah, so that's the only time that we sometimes take out parathyroid glands purposely is when we're taking out lymph nodes that we know may be involved exactly. with malignancy. And then our job is to make sure that at least two of the parathyroid glands stay happy, and if the mm -hmm. other ones have to go, that can go. Gotcha, okay. Uh, other than that, I expect that in the end you will bounce back. I don't think that being on thyroid hormone, if we end up going down that route, will be a big deal for you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's gobs of people who take thyroid hormone, right. um, and uh, even with all your, you know, your training and stuff, I don't think that's gonna gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we should get your thyroid function, get your antibodies, and then talk and come up with a final plan. Okay. Unless you, you know, I mean, it seems like it's definitely going to be surgery. It's just going to be a matter of whether you take the whole thing out or, or half the thing out. That's you know? where I'm at. Um, and I'm going to leave that to your expertise, to be honest with you. Even though, you know, it's ultimately my decision, but I, I trust your instincts because you, you've done so many of these, you know. And I, Well, I'm going to talk to Len because right. I always talk to the endocrinologist before I go. And I'm mm -hmm. going to tell him about uh, my concern of that one margin over there. Right. And sometimes I will even I, like take a picture of the ultrasound and send it to him. And cool. Say, this is a, and because, you know, the, yeah, please. So the endocrinologist often will uh, kind of push my direction as well because 
you know, if the endocrinologist is looking at it and mm. telling me they're going to get radioactive iodine, then it really doesn't matter what I think anymore. Because you might as well take it out, right? I need to, well, I have to. I mean, at yeah. that point, I'm, I'm, if I don't, I'm only setting up the patient right. for a second operation. So, you know, that's why I will. Well, um, what was his um, instincts when you first talked to him? Well, I didn't even, I didn't want to bias myself. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Because I try not to do that. Cause gotcha. You know, I, I just wanted to talk to you, feel mm -hmm. what your thoughts were. Yeah. And then I figured I told him I'd call him later today and we'll go over it. What do you think about people have been telling me, you know, of course I've gotten every person in the entire industry, you know, every doctor contacted me, you know, I have a very big, obviously, social media following. People tell me uh, potassium iodide, sometimes these, these cysts and these things are caused by deficiencies in iodine. And... There are countries in the world where iodine deficiencies cause yeah. things like goiters. Uh -huh. uh, we're not one of them. That's what I thought. I thought maybe little, I don't have a goiter, I have a cancer on my... Right, right. so right. yours is different. Right, right, right. But uh, when my kids were little, every time we, we would go to Chicago and we'd drive by the Morton Salt Factory, I used yeah. to tell them the story of why there's iodized salt right. until they eventually... And, and I eat a lot of salt. I'm a salt the whole. Right, so, and I, so you get a time... And I do seek help, seek help supplements too, so I mean, I can't imagine uh, if being... If you're, if you're taking kelp, then you have tons of iodine because okay. right. that's just filled with it. So right, right. iodine um, deficiency, uh, I don't even know if it really exists all that much in the United States. Right, right. That's Because that's the new uh, nutritional craze. Everyone's on taking things. Potassium iodine is going to cure everything. Yeah. Well, you can you can actually make yourself hyperthyroid by yeah. taking a lot. Oh, yeah. really? We've seen people who have come in here who are hyperthyroid and they are taking a ton of... It's just, uh, just too much thyroid production. Yeah, a yeah. ton of iodine and we uh -huh. say, please don't do that. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Anything else, anything nutritionally also that you would suggest taking? Um, um, I mean, I listen, I listen to your videos. Okay. <laughs> like I said, it sounds like nutrition yeah. wise. No, I got it. Yeah. That is not your issue. Right, I think right. you spent, uh, you spend more time thinking about nutrition, no, do, yeah. you know, every day than most people do in their entire life. I yeah. think, cause yeah. you had it really broken down and talk. Mm -hmm. So I don't think nutrition okay. is an issue. Right? Okay. I think this was just, everyone gets something in life. And right. This is your thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I was lucky I found this. Is this pretty small in terms of like oh, what yeah, you normally see? This is in our smallest size grouping. So if you look okay. at the staging for thyroid malignancy, right? Uh, we, you know, all staging has a, a T and N and an M category. The T being the size, the N being the lymph nodes that are involved, mm -hmm. and M being does it spread elsewhere in the body. Right. We have no reason to think it spread elsewhere in your body, right. so you would be M zero. We okay. have no reason to believe you have lymph nodes involved because your ultrasounds. So you would be N zero, mm -hmm. and then from a T standpoint. Mm -hmm. We divide, it, it's really based on size and how much it spreads like outside of the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. So yours is in the thyroid gland and it's less than two centimeters in size. So right. from a staging standpoint, you end up in the, the T1, N0, M0 category. Oh, and good. you're less than 55 years of age and 55 mm -hmm. presently is our cutoff for high versus low risk of people who are older than 55 gotcha. get into a higher risk category. Yeah. So you're really sort of in the lowest risk category. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. All right, so that was my uh, trip to the doctor's office today. He uh, obviously gave me some, some stuff to think about. I'm going to get my blood work done on Monday probably so they can check my thyroid antibodies. Um, check my thyroid function. I think my thyroid function is probably perfect right now, but you know, obviously I want to see if I have thyroid antibodies to see if I do have any kind of autoimmune issue with my gland. My sister does. So that's possible that I have that. Um, not that it would matter, but it would, it would confirm that if I, have a, if I have an autoimmune issue, which I don't think I do, but if I do, it would make sense to take the entire gland out because eventually the gland will fail anyway, and I'm going to be on full replacement. Um, if I don't, then, then I really have to you know, decide, do I want him to take one lobe out or do I want him to take both lobes out and just go on full replacement? Obviously, another decision, as you heard him say, would be um, based on if the thyroid nodule is, very, is too close to my trachea once he goes in there and actually physically removes the gland, um, that would be an indication to take out the entire gland because they may have to give me radioactive iodine, and if they do that, it's going to destroy any thyroid tissue anyway. So there's a couple decisions to be made. I have a feeling the ultimate decision will be made by him in the operating room, which is going to be based on if that, if that thyroid nodule is, is too close to the border and is touching my, my trachea, as he described, I will give him full permission to remove the entire gland, and I'll just go and replace him. If it's not, and he thinks that there's, you know, that, that he can preserve function of the other lobe, and there's nothing to, to really worry about, and he doesn't, they don't need to give me radioactive iodine, then I might just tell him to leave the other half in there and see if that functions properly for me. The only, but then I have to think about, well, can it possibly come back in the other lobe? I've talked to some doctors who said take the whole thing out, go take the radioactive iodine, and 
be done with it. Some people said, look, if you don't need to take the other one out, don't take it out. So it really is going to be a decision of mine. I have to think about it, obviously. I also have to see what the blood work shows and make a decision. And then when I finally do and I go back and we, and we set the, with the surgery data, there's going to be surgery no matter what. I'm not going to do the wait and watch. Uh, I'll let you guys know exactly what I decided, why I decided it, and uh, when the procedure is going to take place. The great thing is that because I know this guy now and he seems to be, I'm on the inside track with him, as soon as I want to get the surgery, I can kind of just call up and, and, and schedule it, which is obviously something that I have to really thank my friend, uh, uh, Dr. Lenny Thaler for, because that's his connection. And that's why I went for the guy, because it's always good when you have an inside track on a doctor, because you're going to get a little bit uh, preferential treatment. And that's uh, sometimes you need a little, a little helping hand. So, so that's why I always tell people, if you give out and give back to people, and you give out knowledge and you give of yourself and you give of your time, it comes back to you in times when you need it. And that's, you know, you don't do it because of that, but that's just a fringe benefit of, of providing a lot of good services and being a good friend and, and being a, a good participant, okay, in society, not being selfish and hoarding and, you know, trying to worry that you don't have enough of everything and, and just being very selfish. And uh, that's something I've, you know, I, I had to work on it. I was very selfish early in my life and I had to learn that if you want to succeed in life and you want to be successful, and when I say successful, not meaning that you have a lot of money, but successful and that you feel fulfilled in what you do, you have to give back to other people. So as you garnish knowledge, as you garnish money or success, give that success and money and, and, and knowledge back to other people and enable them so that they can go and do great things. And you never know when it's gonna come full circle. Someone you helped 20 years ago might be helping you, you know, later. My friend Lenny and I have been we're friends our whole life. I never think I thought I'd ever have to call him for help or anything. And maybe he'll need to call me at some point in the future. He'll have something to ask me. And that's, you know, that's what friends do for each other. And so I'm very grateful for his friendship and for all his support during this and all your support as well. Dave Palumbo here with the Dave Palumbo RX Muscle News Update.